We just got the full roadmap for Modern Warfare 3 Season 2, and this entire season is zombie-themed. Every little bit of content we're doing has something to do with zombies, which sounds great for zombie players, but not quite. And I'll explain why. So first, we're going to go over the roadmap. However, there's additional things that aren't on the roadmap. There's a new animated fire zombies camo and some other earnable camos as well. So let's go over the roadmap real quick, and then we'll go over the additional stuff. So Call of Duty Warzone, returning map, Fortune's Keep, Eradication Contract, Weekly Zombie Target, and yes, that is a mimic. There are going to be mimics in Warzone, Squad Wipe Streak, Extendable Bridges, and then in season, we're getting a Research Vessel and Bunker Buster Kill Streak. New features, Wonder Weapons. Yes, there are going to be Wonder Weapons in Warzone. Zombie Power Ups in Warzone. A Rogue Signal Public Event. Then in season, we're getting Portable Decontamination Stations. And then we're getting Warzone Rank Play Resurgence, which does sound kind of fun. I'm not a huge Resurgence player, but I am going to give that a go. Then we've got the Modern Warfare 3 content, new map, Stash House, Vista, Departure, uh, Operation Tin Man. Then in season, we're getting DOS House Remastered. We're getting some variants of existing maps. We're getting Skid Grow and Airborne. New modes, Team Gun Game, Bounty in season, Horde Point LTM, which Horde Point sounds like a lot of fun. Snipers only, and then Juggernaut Mosh Pit LTM, and that's going to be in season. Now we've got the Modern Warfare Zombies content. New Story Mission, in season. New Dark Ether Rift in season new schematics in season new warlord in season so none of this stuff is going to be at the launch of season two we're still months away from seeing any of the content they listed here uh, and that's it for what they showed on the roadmap itself for zombies there is some more but it's in the blog post but yeah now we're on to weapons operators and more we're getting the bp50 in the battle pass the ram 9 in the battle pass in season we're getting the subverter uh this is a sword in season we're getting a sword aftermarket parts that's a chainsaw there ninja vest operator laswell or black cell we're getting a golden skeleton called john doe events horde hunt year of the dragon cryptid boot camp the walking dead fear of the living and then in season we're getting vortex decayed realism walking dead there's going to be rick grimes in the battle pass in season we're getting another walking dead character uh dune part two we're getting another dune event and it looks like we're getting another dune tracer pack on top of that now moving into the blog post itself the first thing they go over are the new maps and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because we'll see them when they actually come out if you do care i am going to leave them linked below out of all the new maps the ones that are interesting to me are airborne which is terminal but zombie themed and then we've got skid grow which is skid row but it's overgrown now. Operation Tin Man is a new map for the war mode coming at launch. Next, we've got the new modes. Team Gun Game, it's gun game, but you're on a team. Uh, snipers Only, it's Snipers Only. A uh, Horde Point, which is Hard Point, but with zombies. Juggermosh, everyone's a juggernaut. Bounty, then we've got Vortex Decayed Realism, which is Team Deathmatch and other modes on the zombie-themed maps. Then we have Multiplayer Rank Play Season 2, which is coming at launch. There's going to be a new set of rewards. This time, it's going to take 100 wins to get the Rank Play camo. But on top of that, there's going to be a Division camo. So whatever Division you end at, you're going to get a camo for that. If you're Gold, you're going to get this camo. Platinum, Diamond, Crimson, Eerie. And then if you're Top 250, you're going to get this camo which looks like the you drop this camo that they gave out for free. These are going to be animated, so hopefully they look a little bit better once we actually see them moving. Next, we've got a new perk ninja vest coming at launch. It doesn't block any of your equipment slots. It also doesn't block any of the gear slots either. It eliminates footstep sounds, immune to movement reduction effects, bonus shuriken and throwing knife ammo, resupply shuriken and throwing knives every 25 seconds. If you like using throwing knives, this sounds super good. Now for the new zombies content in the actual zombies mode, the dark aether story act continues continues mid-season. In season two, strike teams from Operation Deadball continue to confront terrifying transdimensional anomalies, new secrets await in the exclusion zone, and the tensions are heightened this time. As Terminus outcomes have followed your teams into the rift, thankfully you have an expert guiding you, Sergei Ravanov, battle alongside the rest of the squad, completing a series of dangerous tasks and find your way out of the Dark Aether before it's too late. Enter the second rift, mid-season. A new story mission with new terrors lurking around within the Dark Aether awaits you. You'll utilize a variety of redacted during the investigation of the second rift. Alarming abbreviations around the new maze, a mysterious entity makes her presence known to Ravanov. And the team, while they frantically search for an exit from the rift, earn coveted rewards, follow cryptic clues, and complete time tasks all while facing down the largest infested stronghold yet seen. New challenges and schematics coming mid-season. These are the new schematics we'll be able to get. Mags of Holding. Who has time to reload? Not if you've activated the Mags of Holding, which allows your ammunition to feed directly into your weapon's ammo stash, essentially eliminating the need for you to reload your weapon. This is huge. Is this going to be active for the entire game? This is essentially Ring of Fire, but it seems like it's 
permanent. This will probably be the most OP out of all schematics. Or, yeah, this, this will definitely be the most OP if it just eliminates you needing to reload for the entirety of the game, pretty much making speed cola useless. And this might even change the meta because there's some weapons that are bad because of their reload speed. But if you eliminate reloading, those might become some of the strongest weapons in the entire game. Maybe there's some shotguns, some rocket launchers that would just be absolutely busted with this. So we'll definitely be testing this one and this does come out uh, in the mid season update. Then we've got a blood burner key schematic, which does exactly what you'd expect it to. You use the key, it spawns in the blood burner. We've got a VR 11 wonder weapon case schematic, and this allows you to spawn in a VR 11 weapon case. Then we've got a new warlord once again, coming in the mid season update. The warlord has set up her fortress in the kill house at the military base. She is known as a deadly and elusive chemical warfare specialist and her defenses should be approached with extreme caution. Expect the interior to be well fortified with soldiers, snipers, turrets, and traps, as well as poisonous gas grenades. It would be wise to bring gas mask. Breaching the fortress is only the first challenge. Once inside, expect visibility issues as the new gas grenade compound hangs in the air throughout the facility, disrupting almost all sensors, including thermal weapons. Perhaps there's a way to counteract this. Expect her to utilize conventional armaments as well as a poisonous smoke screen, counting on her numerous bioweapons to choke you out. It's gonna take teamwork to box her in and eliminate her. So yeah, besides the universal stuff we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the blog post, that appears to be everything coming to Modern Warfare Zombies in Season 2. And it's not even coming right away. This is coming in the mid-season update. So we've got months to wait. And this really isn't new content. It seems to be altered content. So yes, we're getting a new story mission, but how long do you think these take for you to complete? Maybe an hour? And the thing about story missions is once you've completed this, you aren't able to do it again. It's a one and done type scenario. So this is maybe an hour, maybe two hours of new gameplay. Then we're getting a second dark ether rift but how different is this going to be from the first one this one also appears to be on almazra this time it's at the mall if this is going to be a copy and paste of the other dark ether where we teleport in do three contracts and then exfil there's not much to really do here i mean it would be fun the first time you do it but how many times have you gone back to the first dark ether rift after you beat it i did it once then i did the hard mode and then i did it a few more times for gameplay for footage but I don't know the, the dark aethers aren't super replayable to me it's kind of like a one and done type thing uh hopefully they can find a way to make the second dark ether rift more of in-game content where it's fun to do over and over again and there's a reason for you to do it but i have a feeling you're going to go into the dark ether rift you're going to unlock the hard mode when you do the hard mode you're going to get these three rewards you're going to get you know the wonder weapon schematic the mags of holding schematic and the blood the blood burner key schematic and then once you've done that there's really no reason to go back to the rift again. And that's probably going to take, what, three hours to do. And then once you finish that, uh, that's all of the new content. Also, I guess there is the new Warlord on top of that. But same thing with Dokubi. When they added Dokubi, she was fun to go and kill once. But after you killed Dokubi once, the rewards were super mid. There was really no reason to ever go back. And hopefully they have fixed that with this Warlord. But I'm guessing that this is going to be like the other two Warlords on the map. That they're just kind of there with no real reason to go for them. Then obviously Fortunes keeps coming back to Warzone. This being a Resurgence map. There's a bunch of different POI changes on the map itself. But these are things you'll be able to experience yourself when it comes out in a few days. There's going to be Zombie Nest from the actual Zombies mode on the map. And there's going to be an Eradication Contract. These are just limited time though. There's also going to be Zombies Power Ups on the map. There's going to be Double Points full armor max ammo fire sale oh cool warzone's getting a fire sale before the zombie mode does looting spree czar core undead knight then we've got resurgence ranked play which is coming at the launch window they break down how it's all gonna work i'm not gonna cover this it will be linked below if you want to check it out yourself we will talk about the rewards the rewards are going to be similar to the mp rewards however it's going to be based off of kills or assists and if you want to get the camo it's going to be a thousand kills or assists so no different than rank play for warzone last year but this time it's on resurgence so getting those kills should be a little bit easier and unfortunately it doesn't seem like there's division camos for uh warzone resurgence rank play you're only going to get emblems and calling cards depending on what division you landed in next we've got the new weapons and yes luckily these will be usable in zombies so this is really the only new content we're getting at the launch of season two for zombie fans we've got the bp50 assault rifle which is pretty much the f2000 that's going to be fun to try out in zombies we've got the ram 9 submachine gun also in the battle pass i don't know we'll, we'll try that when it comes out it looks kind of like the mtar that we've already got 
We've got the Subverter Battle Rifle, which is coming in season as a weekly challenge. That's far away, so we'll get to it when we get there. I'm excited to use this in Zombies. We got the Soul Render Melee in season. It doesn't tell you how you unlock this, so it's probably going to be from some sort of event. Uh, it is going to be fun to grind camos on this. Can't wait to unlock Borealis on a sword. Who knows if it's actually going to be good in zombies, but I'm going to get all the camos for it regardless. Then we've got some new aftermarket parts. This is an under barrel chainsaw, which um, speaks for itself. That is going to be fun to mess around with in zombies. Hopefully it's really good because the flamethrower was a little disappointing. I could see this being really good if you have to reload because it's probably not going to have ammo. But yeah, you just switch to your under barrel chainsaw there's a bunch of other aftermarket parts coming this season as well the jack burnout which is a battle pass unlock gives the holger a select fire mode called the jack burnout that provides dramatically increased fire rate but can overheat and expand the barrel introducing spread we've got the jack tyrant 762 kit this caliber conversion kit swaps the receiver and magazine to accommodate the 762 blk ammo for a harder hitting subsonic weapon the Jack Backsaw Kit, a conversion kit focused on making the Holger 556 more maneuverable, the stock removed entirely for faster, more angle tactics. The Jack Limb Ripper, this is going to be the underbarrel chainsaw, and this is coming in a weekly challenge, so we might not be able to use this at the start of Season 2. There's the Jack Mag Lift. This conversion kit modification reinforces the Magwell Bolt Trigger Assembly to accommodate extra large drum magazine for the Haymaker, so you can have even more ammo on the Haymaker. The Jack Outlaw 226 Kit. Kit for the Bass P. This conversion kit transforms the Bass P into a lever action rifle, slowing the fire rate, but vastly improving the accuracy for deadlier precision. The Jack Glassless Optic. This was actually supposed to come out in season one, if I recall correctly. I'm pretty sure I read this off in the season one blog post, but I guess it got pushed back to season two. A lot of these are interesting, but by far the best one is going to be the Underbarrel Chainsaw. Can't wait to test that out. Then we've got Black Cell this season, and yeah, the whole the whole battle pass. You can see it's got dark ether crystals on it. It's a zombie-themed battle pass for a season that got no new zombies content. The battle pass includes Rick Grimes, so if you buy the battle pass, you're going to get him, and he's an instant reward, so you don't have to go through any tiers to get him. Same thing with Kate. She's also going to be a battle pass reward, and she's an instant one, so as soon as you buy the battle pass, you get it. Then if you buy Black Cell, you're going to get the John Doe Operator, which is a golden skeleton with purple stuff on it. Looks kind of sick, but there's already a bunch of other skeleton and zombie operators. Uh, more store offerings. Obviously, there's going to be more store stuff. There's an actual Walking Dead bundle coming out in season. There's going to be a free gift pack for Black History Month. There's a Call of Duty League Let Em Cook pack, which I assume you're going to have to pay real money for. But if that's what the operator looks like, that's pretty sick. The Cod Endowment Action Pack. And big surprise, there's going to be even more bundles coming. Here's a little sneak preview at some of the bundles and some of the operators that are coming this season. But we'll talk more about these as they actually come up because these are pretty far away. There's new challenges, events, and progression. This is the new weekly challenges in the camo you get the rotten inferno and it's confirmed this is animated this is way better than the season one camo that looks absolutely fire uh pun intended however unfortunately since this is a weekly challenge it's going to take eight weeks to unlock this this is not something we're going to get right away we're going to have to do all the week challenges and pretty much at the end of season two you'll be able to to get and unlock this camo but uh, i am looking forward to that that's probably gonna look amazing when you take it into zombies um they talk about all the different events that are coming we've got the horde hunt event which is available at launch from february 7th to march 6th with four total rewards we've got the year of the dragon event available from february 9th to 14th with 10 total rewards cryptid boot camp available from february 14th to the 28th with nine rewards the walking dead fear of the living from february 28th to march 6th with 10 total rewards and then there's going to be more events in season two reloaded here's the new prestige uh blueprint you get if you hit max rank here's the new prestige icons which these ones don't look as cool as last seasons these ones all look very similar whereas the last season's ones didn't quite look the same but yeah other than that uh, is not much else to talk about they just want you to upgrade and buy the full game of modern warfare 3 and they talk about a little bit a call of duty warzone mobile and how it's coming soon even though it's been coming soon for like the last year and a half overall um i would be lying to say i'm not disappointed uh this season is in theory this should have been the best season out of all of the seasons for zombies players because it's a zombie themed season but somehow they're releasing a zombies themed season 
with absolutely no content in the actual zombies mode so uh yeah i'm not gonna drag it on i'm not gonna uh, talk too much about it it's just that's what it is hopefully treyarch's next game coming out uh later this year is gonna be amazing let me know your opinions on everything we covered in this video what you're most excited about uh, and i guess i'll see you guys in the next one have a great day peace lego unlocked he's lego unlocked it's going to unlock all these camels